We just passed 21,000 subscribers and it's getting close to Christmas. So I thought I would sit down with my grandpa here and ask him some questions about, about farming. And I, I had you guys comment some questions that you might want to have asked. So I have those here. So we might be uh, asking some of those. So first off, this is my grandpa. You've seen him in a lot of the videos. He's very active in the farm. He runs the bagger all summer. He's also 89 years old. He just turned 89, what, two weeks ago? Uh -huh. About two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. So he's 89. He still works a lot during the summer, still helps out. He runs the bagger during hay. Um, in spuds, he goes around, make sure that the equipment's all running. He'll check belts and chains and stuff, and he'll run for parts if we need parts. Um, and in planting, he's usually helping line things up and getting stuff ordered. And like he just ordered parts for our uh, manure spreaders that just broke down. So orders parts, gets parts. He's very active in the farm. So it's nice to have him around <laughs> because he has a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. So we have this little uh, centerpiece here. This is a little model of the combine we just bought. So we'll leave that there. <clears throat> so, well, let's just start with when, when did you move here? Cause I, you moved from Utah in 1944, 1944. I was nine. <laughs> so you're just <laughs> a little boy. I have a daughter who's nine. So oh, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So Hazel's nine. So that's, that's kind of crazy. So, so what caused you to move up here? Well, we, my father had a brother that lived up here in uh, just a little a mile or so east of us here. Is that Wayne? Wayne. Wayne okay. Espen. And uh, he, we'd come up and visit them once or twice a year. <laughs> and they couldn't get, especially in the summer, they couldn't get over how much water there was up here. Utah was, southern Utah was really dry. And oh, yeah. uh, it depended on spring uh when they had almost cut floods, you know, in the spring when the first runoff is, and they remember always trying to get over all the ground they could because they didn't know they'd have enough water to do it again. Oh. And I don't know, it was really, really poor. And it seemed like they had some wells, but they didn't produce very good. Huh. And uh, they had a few sheep and a few cows and, and uh, they had some horses that you could use horses. Anyway, they decided they wanted to move up here where there was more opportunity more water and so forth so, so did they have a farm down in utah yes a little farm or they had a farm. I, I don't remember how big it was i think they had a, a around 100 150 acres and okay. uh, had a home there in the farm and where yard. where in utah was that that was uh north of cedar city called enoch or midvale oh okay valley and now, at, now there was used to be, you know, very few homes around down there, and uh, they just a little had a little church house up in Enoch and we went to. And uh, a few years went back there, and I couldn't believe it because they're all filled in with houses all over. They have a stake bit building there now. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just really changed. I can hardly recognize <laughs> the homes that I did used to know. Utah's grown a lot. Yeah, it's <laughs> really last. really changed a lot. In the last but. 80 years. So when they moved up here, how much ground did they buy? Did they, so this right here behind the house, was that the, where they, their first place they bought? Uh, that was, my uncle had that. Okay. They bought this, uh, they bought 120 acres. I think it was, they had an 80 down, it was kind of a middle 80. Start, there was a 40 on this end and there was an 80. Uh huh. Which went down to it went down to where the pumps are, you know. Okay. And uh, and then they had a 40 over here. <clears throat> Is that what the dairy sits on now? Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, did they start the dairy they, right away or? Well, they, anyway, it seemed like they, my uncle went in with them when they first purchased or so kind of keep it going, hold it. They, they brought, to, I think they must have brought, They'd had dairy. My gr grandfather had a quite a dairy, and they during the depression they was 
they deliver milk around Cedar City. Oh. And the, and they were building, helping, helping, building some homes and stuff in town. To, I don't know some of these government programs or whatever it was, but uh, anyway. So they had they had about fifteen, seems like around fifteen cows, and probably twenty heifers or so, you know. And uh, my brother had a, a sheep project for his FFA or whatever it was, you uh -huh. know. He was seven years older than me, and so he was up in high school. Okay. And uh, they they uh, hauled everything. They got, I think they got a trucker to truck the cows up. Oh. The dairy stuff. The and we, uh, my father, hooked a big old heavy farm wagon behind his pickup, just a little, old, you know, half ton Ford pickup, <laughs> and. Uh, we had, he had it pinned up so he had the sheep in oh in the front of it and some hay and uh -huh. a little equipment and, huh. you know, and we trailed that wagon all and it we it wasn't the freeways back then uh -huh. and it was it took two good days to get up we always stayed over in Salt Lake when we went back and forth and and uh, anyway the, the the war was just kind of World War Two was just kind of ending about getting back near the end and there was uh gas rationing and whatnot and they were trying to get the speed on it, speed limit i think was 35. oh they're trying to keep the speed down and oh yeah and uh, trying to get more fuel yeah. economy out of everything so it was, it was a slow thing and yeah i didn't <laughs> two days to go from man cedar city to yeah because today yeah. that would only take about six hours Five to six hours. Yeah, and that, it would probably. Yeah, it was two, days. two, two big days to bring up slow outfits and whatnot. But, so we we came up and, uh, let's see. Well, it was in the spring. We moved up and they had a, the place they bought had a, a big red barn. Mm -hmm. Just a small house. Three, like one bedroom. Living room, kitchen, I don't know, just uh -huh. a very small home. Uh, home one was an old, didn't have many convenience, didn't even have water in the house, uh -huh. didn't have a bathroom or anything. But they started working on getting that in shape, you know. So where was that at? Was that right over here? Yes. Was that the that little, little house, house in the dairy? There. That little white house only. So the house they moved up here is still over there at the dairy, and now the dairy uses it to house some of their workers that they've done a lot of remodeling on it since yeah then. yeah it's a lot it, newer it had never even been painted when we got it there oh wow Just cracked wood you know of course they they put siding on it and they've insulated it and got yeah. electric heat in it and anyway they, it's been fixed up a lot and how many siblings did you have all in that well house? i had i had my older brother and uh and my sister just two years younger and then two two little brothers were what five and seven years younger. Okay. So uh, five five kids uh -huh. in a house. I think it's a we'll call it a two bedroom house. I don't know that it was. It maybe it wasn't. We then, added but, a bedroom that. Yeah, I was going to say year. there's there's like a little addition, a little yeah. two bedroom house having seven people in it. Yeah, it was it was pretty crowded. And then they they. Uh, Started working on fixing a bathroom on it and uh, brought water into the house. Well, yeah, there was a well there. We was it had a crank handle on it, you know. Crank. Uh -huh. We had to go pump it out and bring water in the house to drink. <laughs> it was really, really old fashioned. Because what where they in Cedar City they had quite a new home that they'd built just a few years before they moved up there. Oh, so it was really a letdown. But but that was the first thing they was going to do is get a new home built up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, they kind of worked with my uncle on the ground. I don't think we I don't think we had very, seemed like we didn't raise more than about thirty to forty acres of potatoes, something like that. And we had a little cellar out there, and it was. Uh, so what was what was farming potatoes like back then? Back then, most people uh, 
dug them and picked them up in sacks. So dug them with a was two it a, a two row one or two row digger, and then People picked them up by hand them up and by put hand. them in sacks. Mm -hmm. And then didn't I remember you tell me didn't you you you'd put them on like a wagon or something or a big yes, trailer a wagon use the farm wagon had to we we'd go most of the day and then we'd go out and load them all up and put them in the cellar and we'd have we had a, it's an old dirt cellar and it had troughs in the top you'd walk over and dump them in those troughs oh so, so, and the, start a pile you had to be kind of careful you know to so you didn't put the sacks in the cellar you dumped the sacks in dumped the cellar the sacks okay in there so it was both inside and that was a lot of hard work you know <laughs> kind of late when you <laughs> that's a lot different in. than now <laughs> and i'd say that i'd say that's one of the biggest changes is the the, the potato operation you know how going, every, going how everything in, when they got going into bulk uh-huh picking up bulk and and then of course one of the big changes too is they kept getting bigger tractors, mm -hmm. and uh, it seemed like every few years we'd want another tractor, but it was mainly because we wanted a bigger one, mm -hmm. you know? and we was always just upgrading. So tractors. when you when you started, you had some horses, but yes, we used the horses for a while. They'd I don't know, I know we did a lot of harrowing with the horses. Well, we had I remember we had a just a little wooden bottom plow. Behind my uncle had the an old Alice Chalmer, a little one, C uh -huh. or something. <laughs> it was about I think it was about a fourteen inch plow. Or okay, something. one single, and I I remember it seemed like I'd I, when I got to where I help plow, I'd plow he'd plow all day to get three acres done. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> and so that it wasn't too long till we got another little bigger tractor that had two bottoms on it, and then that was. Quite a big improvement. But, I bet that was like game changer uh, for you. Yeah, back then. It was a lot bigger. <laughs> so I remember, I remember Grandma telling me the story of when she was, she would plow when she was a little girl, and she would walk between two big like Clydesdale or Shire big workhorses, and she had a plow and she would walk in uh, in front of these workhorses and plow and she was always afraid they were going to step on her. Yeah, and I remember her telling me that story. Always a little, a I was always back. a little nervous about horses that way too. But so then you got into some tractors. So we have so the little Alice Chalmer tractor that Christopher has is that. Well, that was the that was a few years long, you know, before we got to that one. That was really nice tractor when we got that. That was a forty-five horsepower tractor. And it had two bottom plow. Uh huh. And it was rollover plow and a hang on plow. Okay. And it, we thought that was really good for a while. Use that and then. Uh, Things just kept getting bigger, you know. Yeah. Bigger. Bigger and better. Bigger and better. <laughs> Discs got a little bigger and heavier. And, and the spud planter, the, foot, the first spud planter we used was a. Oh, I can't. I was going to say what the name it was. Now I can't even think what the name was. Iron Age or something. <laughs> it was. Had the steel wheels. And, oh. And uh, two row. Two row and. and uh, person had to ride on the back and how long did it take to plant you 40 acres you said well i'd say it'd take several days okay <laughs> so now we plant we planted 1250 acres this year and it took us i think it's not quite three weeks so <laughs> yeah it's gradually it's gradually it took quite a while before we got up to to raising 100 acres and then and gradually got to 200 <laughs> And cool. we, we got a, a bulk harvester in, in 1954 uh, oh, or five somewhere along in there. One of the earlier, we had one of the first ones around. Uh -huh. And we'd, we we uh, worked with one of the neighbors. He he uh, made some bulk beds to go with the harvester and put them on trailers. Okay. So they were trailers. They weren't. Trailers. You were that, they weren't trucks I think, then. I think he put some on to trucks too, but we had some on trailers. I think we had one on one of. I think we had a couple on our trucks. But anyway, they they were pretty small. <laughs> but then he made a piler too. 
and and it would swivel. Okay. Like for it. it had hydraulic ramp for it up down, then they could you could swivel it, push it around. Uh -huh. <laughs> and of course we only had the dirt cellars back then and he didn't go more than twelve foot high and they were only about thirty feet wide, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh Gradually he evolved with that. Finally, we got our own trucks, and, and the neighbors got their own harvester. And I was kind of working with my brother at, back in those days, who we had kind of a partnership with my mother and my brother to get going. And I got I got married in in uh, '55, and and then we, my brother and I had split up. My brother got a chance to buy a bigger farm out at Rockford and so about a 300 acre piece out there with a whale on it and everything and uh, so we split up our partnership except we still traded equipment and that was a long to drive tractors out there Rockford how far is that 30 miles yeah you know and take half a day it seemed like <laughs> yeah, drive anything. I got an old tractor that would take a while. Tractors and drive, driving uh, spud harvesters and stuff I like that. Like it'd take a while than new tractors do. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it was a long ways. <laughs> we'd go on the back roads, you know. And it was a long old ride, and uh, we were really glad when we were finally, hey, when he finally got his own harvester, and we, we were able to not have, our to, own equipment. Not have to drive everything out there. Yeah, kind of got our own, most of our own equipment. And then that was a big, a big lift. So when did, so how old were you when you started? Was it when Carlisle died, your dad? Was is that when you got more, had to take more responsibility in the farm? Yeah, or? that's when I had, to, I took over the dairy kind of because my, my brother left six months later on a mission, two year mission. And then, so how old were you then? I was about 12. 12 years old and you took over the dairy. <laughs> I, and, uh, I can't imagine turning the dairy over to a 12 year old. <laughs> but I was extra big for my, for my age. And I'd, I'd already been, I'd learned how to milk cows, I think when I was about 10, to run the milk machines, because we just had, you know, 12, 15 cows. And mm -hmm. I learned how to run them. We had two milkers and I learned how to run those the old surge milkers. And so it wasn't that bad. <clears throat> My biggest challenge when I took over the dairy was calves, trying to keep them alive, you know. Oh. The scours and die. And I remember going over to Escott's little dairy over there, you know, where David lives now. Mm -hmm. There's a little white dairy barn behind back okay. there. They were in the dairy for quite a while. But he was, he was, of course, the more learned, more educated, more trained and that kind of stuff and he helped me figure out what to do on the scour stuff. We started saving more of the calves. And That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that way. And uh, I remember I had, oh, we had to put the milk in the 10 gallon cans. And then we, we, we brought, had a cooler. I was trying to remember if it, water in it. I don't know. It was Just cooler. to keep the milk cold? Yeah, we, it hold about six cans or something. I think maybe four, four or six. And keep them in there and then in the in the mornings we'd have to get them out where the milk truck could load them up right about 30, 40 feet out in the yard uh -huh. or somewhere. So you'd come around every day and uh -huh. pick it up? And I, I had to kind of, I had a little hard time moving those big cans. As a, as a 12 year old, yeah, I imagine I'm that'd be probably getting up about 13 by then, 13, 14, you know. But, but I, I uh, kind of used my knees and hoist them along, huh? Rock come across. And so, you were the so when your brother left on his mission, you were the oldest, yeah, or you were the oldest kid around to help, right? And mother had been raised on a farm and a, a dairy farm. And, and she had milked cows when she was older, uh, school, and when, you know, older teenager. 
She was real good at milking cows. And I had one cow that we couldn't get the had such a big bag she couldn't get the bag the milker on her, underneath her. She'd come out and milk the cow off from me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take me forever to try to milk her. I never did learn very good about milking by hand. I could milk, but uh -huh. boy, that it, it takes a real good experience for a person to be able to milk a cow in a I bet. <laughs> ten minutes or whatever it is. <laughs> anyway. And she was always a big help to me all the way along. When I got to, when when my brother, I got him all, and my brother went on his own. I don't know how many years that was. Mm -hmm. Probably ten years. I don't know. But anyway, she would sign my, go with me to get their production loans in the fall, and in the spring, and sign with me. And, oh, well, that's good. Yeah, she signed with me for I don't know five or six years, or maybe a little longer. I don't know. I was I was relieved when I was able to get one without having to have her sign them with me, you know. So it was kind of a slow process. Well, that that year I split up with my brother, I was able to buy this for him here, 120. Uh, mainly from we harvested their potatoes. Oh. That fall, and they let us use that to, for a down payment. Oh. On the farm. And of course, my brother had half interest in the harvester, and so I, I'd, I'd make him a monthly payment too, <laughs> make them one. And we was able to get it. I think it took us four or five years to get my brother paid off. And do you remember what the ground cost back then? <clears throat> Not really. I know that we started buying ground. I should remember, but. I did have it in my notes somewhere, but it was, you know, you know, like four hundred to a thousand dollars an acre or something like that back then. And I know uh, I I got along well with the, my neighbors, uh -huh. and we worked well together with on different things. And and, and uh, any time they wanted to sell, they'd come and ask me if I wanted to buy it. Oh, and, and so really, I didn't have to go out. Is, is that why all of the farm is pretty close together? Yeah, I just all the neighbors sold to me. Well, that's cool. I always wondered that because our whole farm, you can drive from one end to the other end. It's about three miles, right? And it's only about two miles wide. It's not very big, like land, like distance wise, but. A lot of ground. I always wondered why why we were so lucky to get all the ground you know, so that, close because all the other a, farmers are all scattered all over it the place. It took quite a few years to get that all accomplished, you know. But so I just gradually brought the neighbors out. And, you know, Earl too over here had a couple hundred acres, and, uh -huh. and I bought it two different times. It seemed like every time we had a good spread year and had a little extra money, why well, he'd come over and want to sell his farm. <laughs> And sell, take all the money sell a little bit more for you. You all the cash. But, <clears throat> but, uh, but that's kind of the way we did. We bought farms as they come available. Yeah. And, uh, that's what we're still trying to do. But yeah, farms come available a little bit less often than they than you would expect. Right. <laughs> They're getting a little tighter. And then, and then uh, oh, it was about five or six years ago, we, Property really went up. Yeah, it was had been under three or four thousand for quite a while, but all of a sudden it jumped to seven or eight or nine, ten thousand an yeah. acre. And yeah, it's so a lot we, for. Uh, we haven't been looking now. for ground very long since then because it takes so long to pay them off. But but we're still working at it a little bit. Yep, still picking up new ground that we hope to. We'll rent it for a while and hope yeah. to be able to buy it one day and. Yeah, we've been able to rent. That's quite often the way we'd get going too. We'd rent ground from neighbors, and after some time, they decide to sell it. That's mm -hmm. kind of what we this one of Kenneth Johnson's down here has did it. Yeah, it's a close, and it's going to be really. I tried. Looks like a really good piece of ground. I tried got five or six years ago. It was the best there. spuds we had. The yeah, last that, this year. Well, it was really good ground, and it hadn't been farmed very hard. They hadn't raised spuds for a long time. And, uh huh. And I. Approached them five or six years ago, maybe eight or ten. I don't know. Offered them rent, pretty good rent, but they 
long to keep with it. They had one son running it, but he had a harder time to keep it going. So uh-huh. anyway, it, it's worked out really good. And then we've got to renting Young's up there. Uh-huh. We started just renting it for Spuds. Now we rent it, uh, everything. Yeah. You know, we've, how many years have we done that? Uh, as long as I can remember. Anyway, probably 10 years or so, maybe longer. Yeah, I know we've, we've rented, we've run Spuds in it for a long time. And we'll probably be able to buy it someday. Yeah. Or at least always be able to rent it. Hopefully. And, so, uh, so we don't, we don't do the dairy side anymore. All we do for the dairy is we grow hay and we haul the manure out. But so Brian, your son bought the dairy. When did he buy the dairy? When we uh, expanded the dairy in 1980. Uh, when the, that's when we went to 500 head. We'd been under 100 all the time. We built that, the newer barn. Mm-hmm. The, the one, they're still in part of it, you know, they yeah. made it off of, anyway. And, uh, and Keith had decided he wanted to get out of the farming, but he kind of split out what he had. And we had some desert ground. He took part of that for him and took part of his equipment. And, and I tried to get him to stick with it, but and then he wanted to, well, it seemed like when he went out on his own, he wanted to do everything about as big as we were, you know, and it was, uh-huh. he just uh, couldn't keep up with it on some bad years and so not, but. Uh, so he sold the dairy somewhere in the Oh, uh, and then about, something. you know, he'd left, left about 1980. And we, we'd just taken out a, quite a big mortgage to, to get the dairy all finished up, the 500 head. Brian stayed and kept, Brian just, when we went to the dairy, he, I asked, told uh, uh, Keith and Brian were the ones, main ones working with me then. And uh, I told them we, we really need the bigger dairy. We kept raising more spuds. And sometimes when the low spuds prices were down, I thought we need a bigger dairy to help carry us through on bad years. Uh-huh. And, and that, but I said, I don't want to do it. If one of you guys wants to oversee it, why we, we'll do it. And, and Brian kind of jumped in. I'd like to do it uh, because Keith was the older one. You know, he was always over all the pipe movers and the irrigating and uh-huh. kind of the crews. And so Brian was glad to get something that he could do, you know. That's good. But uh, and then it, it got going. He did real good. Started milking shifts. And, Seems, like they're, still, holes, seems it, like they're still doing okay. Yeah, I think so. Still going along. <laughs> and uh, I told him somewhere along there, I says, well, when I get to be 60, I'll sell it to you. But I got to be 60 a little quicker than I thought I would. <laughs> 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 Back then, it's, you know, that was awful old. But then when I got there, it wasn't that old. But anyway, we decided we could handle it because we sold it at a pretty good price to Brian and I think we sold it to him for two million. I don't know the dairy. Mm-hmm. We had the big barn and the Crails had five hundred and seven hundred cows. But anyway, and so he was made monthly payments on that for a long time, and that pretty well paid the mortgage payments for what he was selling. So that's how he got. Mm-hmm. And we just started uh, working with the manure, with the manure, and then for the straw, and then. Uh, we raised quite a bit of hay for him, but he always had to buy about quite a bit extra. Yeah. So then, then uh, well, when did we start working? Well, your dad was in, got into it somewhere along there. I can't remember where. When did they get married? Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, it was at least, let's see, 40, a little over 40 years ago. So, yeah, they, you still had the dairy yeah. going along. So. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But, but he stayed with me in the farming deal. And then we started working Christopher and, well, and, and Jessica. Married Josh, who was a farm, raised on the farm, and she she wanted not only wanted to stay with the farm, 
more than anybody. Yeah. She saw the nice homes that that uh, that Keith and Brian built. And she wanted a nice home. <laughs> <laughs> she said she wasn't going to date anybody unless they'd be a farmer. <laughs> she was really anxious about it. And then, I'm glad she stuck with farming because now I can farm. Yeah. Because <laughs> if she wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't be here. No, you're pretty involved now. You do a good job of keeping things going. You're you're uh, extra careful about getting things done right. Yeah, don't like you to do break a, things. You do a lot. You uh, study it out and and uh, get things set up properly, adjusted, and everything right. More than some, and that's helped a lot. And then you, yeah. you're gone. He was a really good welder. He learned that in the shop. Yep. Yeah, I learned how to weld in high school and even be good at I've done a lot of welding. Done a lot of repairing and even built some things. Yeah. Pretty big. So that's been a big help and and uh, I learned how to run you learned how to run all the equipment. You and and uh, your older brother. Christopher. Christopher and and uh, Josh have pretty well learned how to run everything. Yeah. You, you, yeah, I think there's a couple. I think there's one thing: the the grain drill. Oh, I don't know how to run the grain drill yet. Yeah, that would take. But I'll probably. I'm sure you could learn it if you <laughs> spend a little time on it. That, that I know I've I've helped him calibrate it. That fancy air drill. Yeah, it's, this new uh, one it'll be a little bit different. We just got a new Lemkin solitaire. I can't remember what it's called. It's their new Lemkin solitaire grain drill. We just got this Is fall. Is it a little so. wider? Too. It's not it's much. not wider, but they changed the design, so hopefully it'll go it'll faster. Go faster. The they said they were planting like twelve miles an hour with one of them last year. Yeah, so that would... we're doubling our grain acreage next year, so we're trying to plant faster so it doesn't take forever. But yeah, and all along years, all along I always used the manure from the dairy, you know, and I kept wishing we could get put it on more of the ground, mm -hmm. and then I, then. I, and then I was wishing we could put it on as fast as you could work it in. Mm -hmm. And we finally got to that point just a few years ago. Yep. And we pretty well keep up with the. Yeah, we had to get eight yeah. trucks at least. And then we started, we did we pretty good with ahead. six. And then we <laughs> just couldn't quite keep up. And we finally gone to eight. And, yeah, we can keep up if we run eight manure trucks. It's, but it keeps us going to get it done. But it makes a good operation. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay, so now let's ask some of the questions from YouTube. Um, let's see. Well, we kind of answered the most beneficial, like the equipment, probably the most beneficial thing that we've had. Harvester and bigger than tractors. Is there a certain year that stands out your most memorable harvest? Is there any certain year that you remember that was extra good or, or extra bad, I guess? I can remember a bad one, <laughs> and I think it was 2000. That's that's when we our contracted a bunch with non -Pharrell. Oh yeah. And then the market really went off that fall, and they they uh, read through the fine print. And they could find any if they could find anything over five or six percent wrong with them, they could reject them. Oh. And they there really wasn't there was a. They'd, a little bit of sugar and they'd call it or one thing or another, but it wasn't, it really wasn't that bad. Uh -huh. but, but they started doing that with all their growers or something. We tried to decide whether we could sue them or whatnot, but they finally decided it probably wouldn't uh, take too many years and it wouldn't pay it out to do it. So we, is, is that the year that we had to dump a bunch of our spuds? Uh -huh. We said, do we just dump them in the field or what? No, we? we piled up piles where we used to pile our manure. Oh, okay. We piled them up there, and then they won covers. We covered them with manure. Oh, and uh, but the government come out with a program, and they paid us a dollar, dollar and a half, I think. To and they'd come out and inspect them and check them, and, and when they were in, the inspectors were out checking them, they said, "Well, these are just as good as what they're running down." Yeah, yeah. They, they just didn't want to pay for them. They just they wiggled out of it, and. Uh, I think and I remember I, that. I was, and I think it's been hard on non Perel's business, too. I think they've kind of gone downhill and been having trouble because they can't get yeah. people to sell to them. Yeah, that was, I was that in was, middle school. 
I, rem I remember it. dumping the potatoes. Yeah, I think uh, we figured you know, we figured we lost a million dollars that year. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> but we sold some for twenty five cents. That's before the government came out with that deal. That's crazy. Granted, costs were a little bit less back then, but not but it not was, twenty five cents. They're that more was a than bad that. year, and then that's I was trying to think. That's when we started working more with Lime West, and I think we were still working some with them too. But that was just we had a lot extra with the on trail. We had about five sellers. Yeah, they just they turn one seller down, and after a few days or a week or so, they turn another one down. And huh. It was just really disgusting. It's not good. But uh, we got in with. Uh, I can't remember if we, we were in with uh, Lamb West, Lam West and then we got in with... Uh, we were with Idaho and... Idaho and down to Idaho Springs. Yeah. Got in with them yeah. too. It seemed like about the same time. And then and then the, went along for a few years and then Idaho... The Lamb Weston was the best contract. We kept wanting to get more of it. Oh, yeah, because we lost, we lost Idaho and Lamb Weston like one year after another. Yeah, Plus, we had a yeah. contract with both of them and we lost both of those. Yeah, luckily, Lem West, Lem West decided it was too far north. Yeah. That was their excuse. Luck, luckily, we picked up, uh, the next year we were able to get a contract with Pacific, yeah. Idaho Pacific, because that's who and we're that currently with. that was just really... It's been a good contract, I that think. That was a, a really close call to get that. Yeah. Different type because yeah, we were trying to. Lime West, <laughs> what could we grow other than potatoes? <laughs> well, we we'd been planting grain. I'd been talking to to the Chapmans about uh -huh. contracting, and they kind of kept putting me off. And and finally, they says, "Well, we decided we just couldn't go. This five and a half is what the contracts were going this far. But they hadn't done too much contracting themselves mm -hmm. because they." Had it leased out or something. Uh, anyway, I says, "Well, what about five dollars?" And Dewey says, "Well, I'll go down and talk to him about it." And uh, the next morning, I was out here. I had a, a load of seed on the cart, and we were going to start drilling out here that afternoon. And he come out and says, "They decided to go along with the five dollars." Oh, so we got. I don't know, remember how many acres we did then. Was that the first year with Idaho Pacific? I, I want to no, say No, that was, was, uh, was that it? was just with Chapman's. With Chapman's. And then uh, before we got through the year, they sold it to Pacific. Oh, that's right. But the, but the contract that first year was with... with it was just with, with the Chapman, Chapman. With Chapman. I want to say it was only like four or 500 acres. It wasn't very much. No. And then... Uh, A lot less than we were used to growing. Right. And, we, and then we... Or dickering with uh, uh, Pacific uh -huh. about getting a contract because we'd been down there for a year and they only wanted to do 300 acres. They hadn't been done. The Pacific hadn't been had been working up in the Ryrie area, but they had a Rigby area and they, they hadn't done much contracting. They just been buying mm -hmm. most of the process and one thing or another. But they want they want just give us a 300. Acre contract. And I told them we kept telling them, "Well, we, you just can't make it to three hundred acres. You've got to have enough to use your yeah. equipment, you know, fill them up." And we finally talked them into going with six hundred that year. Yeah, and, uh, really reluctantly. They, they really like our potatoes, so we really been, liked them. We've mm -hmm. been slowly getting more acres and growing with them and contract with them because we we grow some really good potatoes. Last year we kept want, we raised we kept raising it a hundred or two. Yeah. And last year we raised another hundred or so. And then and then they when they did the contracts, they said of course it was a tight year and they raised the prices up. Uh -huh. They they says you can grow all you want. That's the <laughs> they, first time they can grow as much as much potatoes uh, as we want. Say for I I for forty years I'd like been trying to do that, you know. Uh huh. But they, everybody would keep you down. Wouldn't let you raise all you wanted, and so we tried to raise some fresh, and then we, we the fresh contracts just didn't work out. Uh -huh. They weren't. We just didn't make any money on those. So we kind of cut back on our acres for a while. Then we 
got working with the Pacific and kept raising it up. And yes. So we got a pretty good place. Working pretty good now. Yep. Um, let's see here. We kind of talked about some of these. One big change was when they went from flood irrigation to sprinkler irrigation. It took, oh. us, took us a few years to go. Because uh, everything used to be flood. Yeah, everything used to be flood. And then we went to, to just hand lines, you know, gradually. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually we tried to put some pivots on. And we had problems with them. <laughs> Uh, old so we, we didn't do any more for a few years because they give us so much trouble. But, but anyway, then we finally got to where we decided the pivots is the best way. Except that we've got some ground that power poles and canals are yeah. kind of prohibitive. But someday we can. They just put more pivots on. They put smaller ones where it costs more to do it. But gradually. But that was a big change. One of the questions is... What were the yields? So, do you remember what like the the yields were on spuds? Yes, when first I, getting started. It seemed like back then we used to figure two hundred sacks the acre was pretty good. Okay. Anything over two hundred, you was doing pretty good. And it seemed like when you three hundred was really good. It was a few years where you got up to three hundred. So, and I I've I've credited a lot of it to the to the manure and the hay rotation. We just kept building the ground up. But, uh -huh. And then working with the agronomists there, I, they've been real good to help us. Trying to get everything, get all the nutrients and, been, and stuff yeah, and in check. Testing everything and checking it through the summer and make sure they had everything mm -hmm. go and spraying for blight, one thing or another. And, and it's and getting into a, a good seed that works out really good. And we, start, we started doing green dig. Oh, about, yeah. Uh, that was while well, we still with Lamb Weston. Yeah, they wanted, it, but they wouldn't give us any many acres. You know, we kept hold four or five hundred acres only to let us in. But uh, that we decided we got about fifty sacks the acre just by not by green digging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we bumped got, it up. Then we got some of those better varieties. And... Yeah, so now we're this year we averaged five hundred and seventy something. Five thirty, I think. Was it five thirty? Five thirty four. I don't okay. know. It's, yeah, we average over 500 sacks, so yields have definitely increased. Uh, do you remember what the yields were on grain back in? Well, we used to, it seemed like we used to be glad to get over 100 bushel. Okay. You get, sometimes you get 110 or 12 in there. So then we got this new drill. We got it up to 125. Or, yeah. I think this year we were almost 130, right around 130. Seems like it. So, and so it's been a proven, proven up to you. So, and the contract, they gave us a good raise last year on the contract. Now we're a little nervous what's going to happen this year. We're probably going to rate, drop it some, but we hope not too much. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it stays the same. Hope the resistance, everybody, because the expenses are so high, I think. And we've, we were, well, with using this manure as much as we have has helped our expenses down. Yeah. Definitely and, helps the soil. And we're this close location, like say we're there, we're the, within three miles of any of our spots. Now that we've been renting some, we get yeah. a little further out, but, but not much further out. And that yeah, saves us bad. a lot of chasing around. And, so we we get along, try to get along good. <laughs> we just, along we just keep on keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> and every time, every time we buy a new tractor or new combine grandpa's always like oh this will be the last piece of equipment we buy that i buy in my <laughs> lifetime and a couple of years later we buy another piece of equipment oh but... yeah i just i can't hold them down <laughs> <laughs> but it looked like they're all young and ambitious and i'm kind of wanting to slow down but then i think well i'd probably that if i was that young i'd be wanting to do i want to expand back then too and, Expand and grow, and, and they're good, all good workers. You all get, really do a good job. So, almost the only way to stay in business now is to grow big enough to compete. Well, we we've got our yields up good, and yeah. our expenses down pretty good, and uh, we're efficient enough with stuff. It's, 
been, been working pretty good. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for letting me come interview you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to for a while. I was like, <laughs> when could I do it? Mm. So well, and I'll give you a few answers. There's a lot more things that could be said about everything. But... Oh, I'm sure you can't <laughs> you can't have a history of 80 years of farming without. I mean, so, we can fill a lot of hours of interviewing, but I was really glad that when we didn't have to use horses anymore. Oh, I bet. And uh, you know, I used to harrow all the clay, do a lot of harrowing with them. And once, once they, or at least once or twice, they turn around the ends, you know, uh -huh. and turn a little too short, and the harrow run into the back of some of them. Oh, and they took off and run, run away, you know. Oh, off that would be awful. Tip the hair over and went the other end of the field. I don't know how we got to go again. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of scary. But anyway, I just always liked tractors, like bigger ones. We're yep, getting, bigger, we're getting, bigger. Now we're we've got big now. We've I, got some pretty big ones. I keep thinking we surely got plenty of big enough tractors now if we just keep running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just got to keep everything going. Um, go on. You guys work some pretty long hours sometimes to get it done. We're, we get all this new equipment, this new combine, and this new harvest storage equipment. Yeah, will should save us a lot of time. Yeah, should and speed it up some. So. Speed it up, so maybe it won't be. We don't want it to be a drudgery, you know. It takes to be want to be able to enjoy your work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we'll be better now. I think it will too. So, anyway, yeah. I I hope you guys enjoyed the the interview with my grandpa here. Uh, it is Christmas time, so Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, just keep it going. Yeah. <laughs>